Good morning guys and welcome back to the cul-de-sac and I can't think of a better way to kick off the 2021 mini series than with this magnificent motorcycle. I never imagined that we would see a bruff superior in the cul-de-sac and it's such a thrill to share a few clips with you. My friend the owner is a pretty private individual and so I'm going to do my best to share a few details about his incredible bike. I hope I'll do it justice. This is a 1936 Bruff Superior SS80. The SS stands for Super Sport and the 80 designated that it was guaranteed to do at least 80 miles an hour with the top speed of approximately 85 miles an hour. The other big model that Bruff made that most people will be familiar with is of course the legendary SS100. So whereas the SS100 was the top of the range, this SS80 was more of the bread and butter motorcycle for Bruff Superior. This model was oftentimes used by police forces or for sidecar rigs and more for, as a long distance tourer rather than an out and out racing bike. As you can see it's a flathead engine whereas the SS100 models were overhead valve engines. And this particular model, the SS80, came out in around 1935. The engines of all the Bruffs were bespoke handmade motorcycles. They never made their own engine. Instead, they took the best proprietary parts at that time and they modified them to their own specifications. So you may recognize this engine actually comes from a matchless, a Model X motor. It's very similar to the Model X, but Bruff had specific requirements from Matchless. It included a request for larger ports, uh, higher compression cylinders and hotter camshafts. Here, these are the standard Dunlop rims from the time, but the brake hubs are actually from a Royal Enfield. The gearbox is actually mated with what was originally a design from Sturmey Archer. You may remember that name from our three-speed bicycles back in the day. This gearbox is also known as the Doll's Head, or the Positive Shift Selector gearbox. This gearbox design was originally a three-speed transmission. It came out in the 20s for Bruff, but over time the design was acquired by Norton, who evolved it from the hand shift to a four-speed foot shift design. These were expensive motorcycles back in the day, and we all know that they were owned by many famous individuals and celebrities, including the infamous T.E. Lawrence, otherwise known as Lawrence of Arabia, who was tragically killed on his SS100. Every Bruff came with one of three frame design options, and this particular bike has what's known as the B&D, the Bentley and Draper frame. It's a sprung frame at the rear and it's very similar actually to a Vincent motorcycle. The other two types of frame designs were the rigid design and also a plunger design which came out in approximately 1937. The Bruff Superiors also came out with this fishtail design to reduce noise. Apparently George Bruff was really proud of the fact that they manufactured very quiet motorcycles and hopefully you'll hear that in a little while. Every Bruff Superior machine was handmade and no two bikes were ever identical. Uh, the person who ordered the bike could customise the bike just how they wanted it. There are also three types of forks on a Bruff Superior. There's the Monarch leading front fork, the Druid forks, which are similar to the Brampton forks on an early Vincent Series B motorcycle, and then there are the Castle forks. This bike has got the Castle fork set up, which actually originated it and was licensed from Harley Davidson. I believe it was their JD model design. However, Bruff added these extender stays and springs to give it a more cushioned ride. This SS80 and also the SS100 were approximately a thousand cc motorcycle, uh, 60 cubic inches. These are the inspection covers on the flathead engine that can be quickly removed for valve adjustment. This bike 
for the most part, is as it was when it left the factory. There have been some upgrades over the years, naturally, but it's mostly original. Many of the parts were stamped at the factory when the bike was made. For example, the frame, the engine, the gas or petrol tank, the gearbox, and then the oil tank as well. This is an original Bruff Superior petrol tank, but it didn't originally come with this bike. However, the owner still has the original tank. And these petrol tanks were all handmade. There's approximately 12 pieces to each tank, and then they were silver soldered together, and then chromed, and then painted. This eight-day clock is a very rare option, and it's been with the bike since day one. This front valanced mudguard, or fender, came as standard with this model as a touring bike. And this beautiful oil tank was designed specifically for this frame. It would have been tucked underneath for the rigid frame. This primary cover is actually two-piece aluminum, or aluminium, and it's been painted. It's interesting that inside of this primary, it doesn't have what they call an ESA, an engine shock absorber, or a cush drive, or a compensator as it's known later in the later models, which means that it gives quite a kick whenever the rider changes gears. And then just a quick walkthrough of the controls. Here we've got the compression lever, the manual advance, the manual dimmer switch, it's Bakelite, the clutch, the clock, the speedometer, the horn, <laughs> the front brake, and then this steering dampener here. As you can see, Bruff spent a significant effort hiding all the cables with internal controls inside of the handlebars. And this is apparently a very sophisticated setup. And these caps here are actually both for petrol. It stems back to the early days when half of the tank would have held the oil and half of it would have been for petrol or gas. This is a lovely headlight assembly and this piece right here is synonymous with Bruff. Oh yeah, this very unusual side stand is actually unique to Bruff. You push it in and then you drop it out and it's called a Carslake side stand. It was designed by a gentleman called Harold Oily Carslake. Well, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this kickoff addition to the 2021 mini-series of visitors to the cul-de-sac. I have a few more planned, not too many, but a few for 2021. But it's been my pleasure to see this Rolls-Royce of motorcycles in the cul-de-sac. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll speak to you again next week. See ya.
Thanks very much for watching guys. This has been another tale from the cul-de-sac. Please remember to subscribe and click the little bell and you'll get a notice whenever I release a new video, usually every Sunday morning and sometimes during the week.